You can use the shell not only interactively to type in commands line by line, you can also use the shell in order to write applications. This practice is then known as shell scripting. So you can put a sequence of shell commands into a file and you can mark the file as executable by setting the ex uh, executable bit with the change mode command, change mode plus x files. And then if you type in the name of the file, um, the shell will actually execute that file. Or more precisely, um, you can arrange that any interpreter of your choice will be used to interpret that file and execute it. But how does this uh, work? How does the kernel know uh, which shell or which interpreter to use? When <clears throat> you start a program, um, you are invoking, the shell is invoking the exe or exeve uh, system call and the kernel and you pass to that system call um, the path name of the executable program plus the usual array of command line arguments and array of environment variables. And the kernel then looks at the file and it in particular looks at the first couple of uh, bytes of the file. And there's a convention that for many types of file you can identify what type of file it is from the first couple of bytes, which is why these the first few bytes are also commonly known as the magic bytes of a file format. So for example, <clears throat> the uh, binary executable file format that is the uh, produced by your C compiler or the, the linker of your C compiler is known as the ELF file format. This is uh, inherited from Unix system 5, the executable and linkable uh, file format, which is was not invented by Linux, but was also used by a couple of other Unix versions. And it starts with the four bytes hexadecimal uh, 7f. This is a delete character followed by elf. There's a Unix tools that can identify hundreds of different file formats and also some parameters of these file formats based on a database of these magic bytes. So for example, if you have a terminal open, just type file and then the location of the binary of your ls command and it will tell you that if you are on 32-bit Linux, this is a 32-bit executable on a more recent version of Linux is likely to be a 64-bit executable. And <clears throat> the kernel recognizes uh, a number of binary formats, most notably uh, ELF, it will verify whether the, from subsequent bytes, whether the binary has been compiled for an architecture that actually matches the CPU that the kernel loads on. There's also a special sequence of magic bytes that starts with the number sign and the exclamation mark, a combination that's also known as a hash bang, or some people call this a she bang, not entirely sure why. And <clears throat> After this uh, hash bang, you can specify the name of an interpreter that should execute the rest of the file. And if the kernel um, encounters this hash bang, then the kernel starts up the executable listed on the rest of the line and uh, then passes on the file name uh, where this hash bang was found as, it, as the first line, as the first uh, command line argument. So uh, the hash character here is in many of these scripting languages also the command character such that if now bash for example uh, executes a shell script that starts with this line sequence then bash will actually ignore the first line but the first line helped the kernel to load bash and hand over this program for being interpreted uh, to bash. If the kernel does not recognize a file format, then the exec uh, VE system call will return with an error message, but the shell will then usually try to load the file 
itself line by line. Therefore, uh, from within many uh, shells, this um, hash bank is actually optional if you are happy with the shell script just being executed by the current shell rather than any of the authors choosing. But for example, if you're using some of these bash extensions or bashisms, then it's a good idea to specify that you actually want to use bash and not some other shell. If you write your first uh, shell script, uh, as I said, to get it executable, use uh, this command. And then if it's just in the current working directory, it will not be included in your path. So you can prefix by using dot slash you disable the path search and you just say take this file here from the current directory. You can of course also call the interpreter yourself just bash and then the name of a file or any other interpreter, Perl, Python, whatever you like. Uh, the, the hash, this hash bank syntax also works with lots of other interpreted languages, in particular all that accept a program as the first command line argument and that accept the number sign character as a comment character. Uh, shell scripts are examples of so-called plain text files. And a plain text file is just a sequence of lines. Each line is uh, contains a sequence of characters encoded with the um, ASCII character set or some extension of the ASCII character set. And then each line terminates with a uh, line feed or end of line uh, control character. Uh, so this is a very simple file format. It has the uh, uh, property that if you just send byte for byte the content of the file to a terminal, you should get a nice display. And this is uh, the file format that editors like VI or Emacs uh, save. This is different from the uh, more complicated uh, binary or XML based file formats that word processors use. So if you use something like Microsoft Word or LibreOffice uh, and you have a file format where you can choose font sizes, different fonts, include graphics and so on. This is not um, a plain text file and therefore not suitable for writing uh, shell scripts. <coughs> um, unfortunately, uh, the plain text file format, in spite of being very simple, isn't actually uh, precisely standardized. And one of the common pitfalls in particular, if you move plain text files around between different operating systems, say uh, Windows or a Linux version, uh, it's useful to be aware of the minor differences that exist between different um, plain text conventions. The most significant is that unfortunately there isn't a single convention of what the end of line control character is. Um, on some systems, most notably MS-DOS, Windows, and also quite a number of internet protocols such as HTTP, uh, each line actually ends not with a single character, but with a two character control sequence, namely first the character carriage return um, which you can type on your keyboard with control M. This is hexadecimal 13 or decimal OD. Trust me, you may want to remember these numbers because they will often haunt you for the rest of your life. And it's good to be able to recognize them in hex dumps, for example. Uh, <clears throat> and the purpose of carriage return in the old teletype days was to do what the name says, namely to take the carriage, the printhead, and just move it back to the start of the line. So this is separate from the line feed control character, also known as LF, which you can get on the keyboard with control J or the decimal value 10 or the hexadecimal value OA. Uh, the purpose of the line feed control characters in teletype terminals was to advance the paper by one line to push up the paper. So a teletype terminal normally wants to first receive a carriage return and then in some old cases, even after a bit of a time delay, 
a second control character to advance the paper by one. The Yin, uh, Unix authors thought this is quite wasteful having uh, two bytes in there, so they established for their plain text file format the convention that a line feed control character on its own is sufficient to uh, terminate the line. Uh, you don't need two bytes for that uh, purpose. And instead, in the terminal driver in the kernel, they added an option such that if your terminal or teletyper really needs a carriage return, then the driver will automatically insert the carriage return before every line feed character that's being sent out. <clears throat> so if you uh, get a file from Windows and copy it over to Unix, you may find if you open it in Emacs at the end of every line, a control M character. And these are these carriage returns that are not necessary on um, on uh, Unix. Um, there used to be other conventions. The old uh, MacOS operating system before MacOS 10 came along yeah, around 2000 actually used only the carriage return character and didn't have the line feed character. So they also reduced it to a single byte, but they used the other one. Uh, fortunately, that practice is history. Uh, modern MacOS uses the same line feed convention as uh, Unix does. And also more recent versions of Windows are now often happy to accept files that only use the line feed character. So a plain text editor that comes with Windows is the notorious notepad editor. And uh, as of a couple of years ago, the most recent uh, notepad version finally also can deal with files that only contain the line feed uh, characters. And <clears throat> there are some tools such as DOS to Unix that change the line feed convention. Another difference is the character encoding. While today um, the ASCII character set has been uh, long um, established as what all bytes from 0 to 127 mean, for the upper half of the byte range to 255, there have been a number of different encodings use so-called 8-bit extensions of ASCII, such as ISO Latin 1 or ISO 8859-1. Microsoft had an extension of this, which they call in the documentation the ANSI character set, but the technically correct name is code page 1252. And there are so-called extended uh, character codings, EUC, extended Unix code, uh, different versions of that uh, were used throughout the 1980s and 90s in uh, Japan, Korea, China uh, to encode their larger 16-bit character sets. And as of about <clears throat> 2000 to 2005, the Linux world and also other Unixes have switched to the UTF-8 encoding of uh, Unicode, which displays, which encodes ASCII characters using the ASCII bytes and any other Unicode character is encoded as a sequence of non-ASCII bytes. And again, if you move plain text files between different machines, you may have to uh, change the character encoding uh, appropriately, typically from code page 1252 to UTF-8 and back if you move between Windows and uh, Linux. There's an iConf tool to perform character set conversion. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of more differences you may encounter. There is one character called the horizontal tabulator in ASCII that you get with the control I key byte value 9. And under Unix and in the VT100 terminal default configuration, that tab character advances the cursor to the next multiple of 8 column on the video terminal. So if you press tab, then once it jumps, for example, from position 1 to 9 and then to position uh, 15 and so on. Uh, sorry, from uh, 1 to 9 and then to position 17 and then to position 25 and so on. And uh, <clears throat> many editors on Windows, 
uh, they thought this multiple of eight is uh, too large and they halved it. So you will find that if you import C source code uh, that was written under Visual Studio that the tabs actually jump to the next multiple of um, to the next multiple of four instead of the next multiple of eight. And there's a uh, Unix tool called expand that allows you to replace these horizontal tab characters with equivalent number of spaces and you can with an option specify how many spaces should be inserted uh, for a tab character. And I generally would avoid using the tab character in source code that I publish because of this difference between uh, Unix and Windows behavior here. Um, another um, even more arcane difference in plain text files that sometimes can interfere with the interpretation of the hashbang character is something called the BOM or byte order mark. Um, the Unicode character set was originally conceived as a 16-bit character set and if you have 16-bit words there's the question does the most significant byte or the less significant byte come first, the so-called big endian versus little endian convention. So <clears throat> they added a invisible character called the byte order mark, which is hexadecimal FEFF -E -F -F into Unicode. And they declared that the byte swapped version FFFE -F -F is not used as a Unicode character. So if you put at the start of a file FEFF, -F -F, then the uh, a receiving application can use that byte to distinguish whether the byte was encoded in uh, Big Endian or Little Endian. Um, <clears throat> and some Microsoft file format that use 16-bit uh, Unicode encoding uh, use that convention in order to indicate that this is a 16-bit Unicode encoded file. So they used this byte order mark as a kind of uh, magic uh, byte sequence. And the UTF-8 encoding of this particular byte order mark character is a three byte sequence, these three bytes. And some applications, most notable old, older versions of Notepad started that um, as soon as you have a Unicode character in the file, when it writes out the file to indicate that the file is Unicode encoded, it adds the UTF-8 encoded byte order mark as a magic code at the start of the file. This is normally not used under Unix and also doesn't make sense under Unix because there are many contradiction, uh, many conventions that break. For example, uh, if you have stream editors that select or modify just individual files, they would be confused by having uh, the this additional sequence at the beginning to indicate the character set. For, for example, use the grab command to filter out only certain lines that would uh, swallow this uh, byte order mark. So uh, also if you have a byte order mark at the start of the file, it may cause the kernel to not recognize the hash bang. So if something doesn't work, check whether a Windows tool hasn't added the byte order mark. Again, the good news is that Microsoft is very, very slowly after 20 years of protest coming around to the Unix conventions and the latest version of Notepad is no longer adding the byte order mark because this has been uh, quite a pain with a Linux compatibility in particular. This may all sound a little bit uh, tedious and geeky, but trust me, uh, my experience from many project supervisions is students fall very commonly over these kind of mistakes. They uh, write a shell script, a make file, and then it doesn't work. And the reason for it is that they have, for example, these carriage return characters at the end under Linux, and they're often invisible. And therefore, I hope I've saved you a lot of time by going a little bit into the detail of this particular problem.